Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh are here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in Those Who Remain. This was developed by Camel 101, published by the ever awesome Wired Productions and is usually available for £15.99 slash $19.99 but it's just been included in Game Pass so uh, yeehaw little donkey. So we play as Edward, a vampire from a land only known as the Twilight Saga. Nope, wait, crap. Wrong one. But we are an Edward, and we basically have to find out what in the actual itty bitty titty committee is going on. Stay in the light. Uh, now, for achievements and trophies. <laughs> Painful, okay? There's one missable, which is easy, uh, and the rest are story related, but we effectively have to play through the game three times. Yes, I know. Pain! So first up, for this playthrough, we'll be doing the good ending, which basically means we have to save everyone as we go through. Um, the second playthrough, you can go for either the bad or the nightmare ending. And basically, night the nightmare ending is for killing slash condemning everyone. And bad people, uh, bad, for the bad ending, you need to just spare two people. Uh, specific ones, which I'll get to in a little bit. Once you've done all those, you'll get the full 1k as the rest of the achievements are basically tied to saving or killing those people. Yes, I know, it's a terrible save system and it equals PAIN! Either way, to get the full 1k, you're probably looking at around 4 to 6 hours or so, so with that being said, here we go, we're already let's do it ing 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 Now I should point out as well that Obviously, I'm only going, be, only going to be showing you the one playthrough as all locations, all puzzles, etc. Everything remains the same in every playthrough. So you can just follow this video again, but just make the different decisions on your other playthroughs in order to get the other achievements. Get it? Happy days. Fun on the burn, huh? So what we're going to do then, we're going to turn around and head up these little steps right here. You can press the left trigger to run. And he runs, genuinely runs like he's crapped himself, which is, hey, fine, we, we got to get to places. Here's the door number two. Um, press the A button here to get open the mat. And you'll find the key underneath the mat. So again, press the A button and the A button again on the door. The A button is mainly the action one. So we're going to go in, but make sure, now obviously with this game, what you're going to do is turn to the right slightly and turn on the light. Now, and then we're going to finally answer the phone and it'll come up with... Stay in the light! Stay in the light! So what that means is, try and stay in the light, because if you venture off too much into the dark as somebody carjacks us, oh, bro thinks this is Grand Theft Auto. Uh, but yeah, so if we venture too much into the darkness, you will be attacked and killed by these shadow creature monster things. So for now, we are just... Running forward, it's going to be a little cutscene here. Now I should also say, not only is the save system dreadful in this game, sadly, the checkpoint system is also a bit of um, crediness. So, we're just going to walk forward, I'll explain more in just a little bit, but we're going to walk forward, so stay in the light, and then what you're going to do, at the back of this lorry, we're going to take a left, and press the A button here to put the generator on. Now that's going to light up the way for us. And we can just continue following the path ahead. So yeah, the checkpoint system. So effectively, if you die, you don't go back slightly. You literally go back about four or five minutes or so. So yeah, the checkpoint system is not the best either. Anyway, once we've come up to this little farmland area, we're going to go straight past the tractor and interact with this switch to turn it on. Again, it'll always be the A button. And we'll take a right, and you can see a little barn. No, it's not where Homer and Marge Simpson are trying to reconnect. Iggly giggly poo. Um, they is just a barn with nothing in it. So, open up both doors. Take a right into the top drawer here, and then what you're going to find is another key. Yes, I don't know what's happening, but a lot of people leaving a lot of keys about. Maybe they were... Maybe they were uh, angel drug heads or something. Anyway, what we're going to do is head towards the left. We're going to go into the house now. And this is where we're going to see the shadow monsters for the first time. So obviously what you're going to do, you can already see like the glow in their eyes. So walk forward slightly, click the light there. And again, you can see some outside. But what we're going to do is take a right, go through this door. Again, make sure to turn on the light to the left because there will be shadow monsters and everything and they'll kill you dead straight away. So we're going to remove this box, press the B button to throw it or A button to drop it, pick up this fuse, and it's going to fusibly be fuse-tastic. No, that was better in my head. 
So we'll take a right out here, and again, remember to turn the light on before you go outside. That'll get rid of the monsters, and then we can nip outside and head to the left. Again, try and stay close to the left as you go, oh, you know, in the light as much as you can. So then we will take a run, and we're going to go back to the barn, which is to the right of the tractor here. So run, little Johnny Crappy Pants. All the way in the back, there's going to be a generator, and that is going to light up the cornfields. So now we're going to do a trees of May and go running through cornfields when we were younger. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's um, yeah, this is the the that's uh, this is uh, that, 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 that this is the game. Mm, right. So what what we have to do in this bit? It's kind of like a weird part of nothing going on, uh, but we basically have to find two photo frames and a teddy bear. Again, they're all you know very easy. Uh, but what we'll do after the first one, we'll take, uh, we will turn around. It can be kind of tricky to see, especially with the spotlights. But you're effectively looking for this path with the branch just up above our head. And then we will take a right. Next to this glowing death fiery tree is the next photo. And then, oh look, it's my berber. Hello, my berber. And then we're going to turn around. And we'll continue forward take a right here and what we're what we're going to see in a minute is a door and is that the door we need yes it is and if you want to know if you want me to tell you what's going on i don't know either i don't know if we're supposed to be dead alive or what but anyway there's the door keep on running and we are going to find a bear there it is so pick up the bear head back towards the door and then after you've thrown it on the floor we will be able to skedaddle through said Door. This is Rose's body. <gasps> white light. Did it bring me here? What do you think, Jedward? Did the white light bring us here? <laughs> well, we're on one hell of a trip right now, that's all I can see. Right, so we are. Again, this is more of the sort of prologue tutorial. What we're going to do is look at the left mailbox here on the left. It's uh, going to shift us into different realities now as well. So we've grabbed the key. Uh, we'll turn around. And we will try to interact with the door here. We can't get to the door handle. It feels like something's wrapped around the door. Well, let's turn around. So if you turn around and we're just going to head through the door, we are now going to go into the alternate reality. Oh, spooky. Again, nothing is trying to kill us just yet, so it's all good. So what we need to do then is head uh, basically towards the sign here to grab the herbicide pump. It's a pump full of herbies, although the big ball things looked a bit strange, but there we go. So once you grab the pump anyway, we can remove the pallet, because apparently it feels heavier in the real world. And just go ahead and what the hell is that thing? <laughs> it's not creepy at all. So, uh, stick the old pumpy pump on the rumpy rump of the car, and we can now go... Damn, son. I ain't feeling that. So, go back through the white light of the door, and now we can interact with the car and turn the lights on. Why? He's just turning lights on and not literally uh, just grabbing some petrol or gas, even though it's a liquid, um, and just driving out of here. I don't know, but there we go. So, what we're going to do is head towards the door. Again, make sure to turn the light on. You can see angry shadow monster with creepy eyes and machete. So, let's unshetty this guy. Turn the light on. Job done. Interact with the plug on the bottom there. That's going to light up the way for us. It's all Christmassy, apart from all the death and stuff. And go into the room here on the right, and then just behind the desk, in the drawer on the left, we're going to find a lighter. So, again, obviously, we will automatically put the lighter on. Again, just try and stay as close to the wall as you can, the left-hand side. And then we'll continue on our way before we find... Hello, Anika! How are you, Anika? But, uh, yeah, so... See, if you were to just die before we spoke to Anika, again, you would have to do the this whole section again. So, yeah, checkpoints are kind of wienerish in the game. Unfortunately. Your mother is here? No time for questions. You need to leave. Uh, okay. W why? I can't just leave you here. Go, Edward. You will see me later. 
Bruh, I'm telling you right now, she was not alive. Did you see her eyes? Not normal eyes. Anyway, all you can do, you can just keep running forward. Everyone's scared of a bit of lighter. <laughs> so just keep on sprinting forward until you uncrap them. Your pants them. Run, run as fast as you can. The mother can't catch me because she's a cougar and I'm too old for her. Uh, right, so what we're going to do then is go forward here when we're at the diner. Obviously, don't go into the uh, death nodes there. So turn around and you can see this box right here. We are going to need to move this for rather important, you know, so we don't get trapped and did. Um, so, yeah, remove that box and then we can actually go into the diner. So, assuming you don't get caught on nothing. So where did the diner go? Again, don't worry, there's nothing here that will smash us dead for a minute. Uh, we're going to head down the stairs first. And into the basement room. Again, all good for a minute, just staying in this area. We're going to go to the right, pick this box up, drop it on the floor. And we will open up the way, uh, open up the drawer, sorry, and pick up yet another key. Bit of laxy daisies with these keys, aren't they? Uh, so what we'll do is head back up. Now we're going to head all the way up the steps this time in order to get to the roof. The roof. The roof is on fire. Take a left and just interact with the generator here. Boom! It'll be all bright and stiff. Okay, so we're going to turn back around. We're basically going to head back out onto the street now. So go halfway down these stairs, through the diner, and it's actually where our first sort of real enemy is going to chase us. So we're going to go straight forward again, staying in the light. This is where the first enemy will appear then. So basically, all you got to do is not get in front of it. It can still chase you, as you will see. So you do have to be kind of stealthy and a bit careful. But as long as it's not facing directly at you, then you should be safe. So what we're going to do then is just tiptoe your way around where old... Um, I mean, yeah, bruh, I don't know what the hell that's supposed to be. But anyway... What we're going to do is have a look at these boxes here, and we're going to find a cane just behind the boxes. There it is. So once you grab that cane, if you take a look to the left and look up, we can now, if you can just keep spamming the A button, you can use the cane. This is where the monster actually sees me, so just make a break for it. Up the ladder, turn around, and up the next one. He can, they, or it can still chase you. Nip through the door, and you should be safe from there. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, that bit's not bad. If you get caught by him, or her, or it, you will just start again at that little section, so it's not so bad. So, into this room here, past the upside, uh, upside down table-ish, into this next library room. Interact with the middle painting. And it's going to be all like, yeah, secret door and stuff. Which, of course, every library's got a secret door. So go ahead, just interact there with the um, piece of paper, the note on the door, and then we'll turn back around. And yes, Annika is the same girl you just saw. Can you tell by her eyes? So take a right and right again. We're going to go up the stairs since the uh, bottom way is blocked. And here is Anwiqua. Annika, are you dead? Uh, how old? What does this mean? Why don't you tell me so we can end it quicker? Anyway, uh, we, uh, we're going to take a left from where we just came out, sorry, and then go straight down. And again, unfortunately, the horrible monster is here, but damn, son, that is a set of OnlyFans nips if I've ever seen some. Banging. Uh, no, I'm sorry. So if we go to the left here, it, have a look at the number one candle, and then take a right all the way to the end to hit the number three candle then we're all good to go. Again, be aware of the monster, because uh, it can be anywhere, so it might be in a completely different location to you. So I, what I'm going to do is just run straight for it. Again, it does spot me, but we're going to head back to the right and go down the steps and through into the white door. So, uh, yeah, bit of a pain. So we'll interact with the switch here on the right. Again, I do apologize if this is a bit fast as well, but when you're being chased and... Um, Schnizzing yourself, it's uh, yeah, it gets a bit, it gets a bit fast sometimes. So, take a left out of this door. Again, the monster will be uh, popping out, so we're going to go straight and through this next white door. Um, again, the monster will still be here, so again, just be careful. But we're going to have to do a bit more running this time. So, as long as it's on the left, I, 
I went a bit stupid with that then, but we're going to head back down the stairs anyway. We're going to take an immediate left and left again. We're going to go straight through the door into this library part, and the chase is thankfully over. So we're heading down the steps now, but yeah. So I could have done all of those sections a little bit sneakier, but uh, apparently I didn't. So there we go. But once we get down here, we're going to read this note on the table. Yes, it is definitely a cult. You've got a monster with a big thing sticking through her neck and a set of boobs I could only wish of. Only wish for. <sighs> anyway, let's catch our breath as we arrive at Mark's house. So, uh, if you want to know who Mark is, he is basically, obviously, we're kind of investigating while we, uh, you know, try not to die. So Mark Harris is supposedly the one that uh, was supposed to have killed Annika. So we need to do some investigating. So heading through the house here, what we're going to do is take a left, go through this door that just closed. Yes, and through the next door again, make sure to turn the light on before we head in. There we go. And we are going to have, uh, just get rid of these chairs here. And then we're going to look in the metal cupboard. Why, you ask? Well, I'll tell you why. We have a bolt cutter. Because you can't get through bolts without a cutter. So we'll take a right here when we get out of this section. And straight in front of us, to the left now, is the bolts. So we'll snippity snappity way out of that one. Now we are going to head straight through and down the basement again. Make sure to turn the light on. The last thing you need is to hate basements because everything's trying to kill you. Uh, and just go through the white light door. So, again, we're in the alternate reality. So, we'll head up the steps, turn the light on, because apparently we couldn't do that just ourselves in the real world. Head straight through the door, take a look to the right here, and now we can open up this one and head through the white light again. And we'll just go the same uh, path. So, up the stairs, all the way through, and take a right into Mark's room. Now, this is where we're going to get the missable achievement. Again, remember, it's only one missable achievement in the game. And if we have a look at the Syndrome poster here, this is it. So again, the rest now are tied to just saving everyone, slash killing everyone, slash getting the three endings. So once you've done that, have a look at the bottom drawer here and uh, have a look at the note. Again, it's a ve very interesting story. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's definitely the best thing about this game uh, unfortunately so we're gonna head through and Annika is gonna be all like hey bruh so all we're gonna do then is follow Annika for the time being so take a right to go past the bolt cutter door and we're effectively now going to head into Am's toilet don't take me to the toilet I can take it by myself remember to turn the light on and then head inside now, this is where we're going to see Mark for the first time. He's not in a very good position, but it's going to be a minute cutscene or so. Is that Mark? Is this how? Damn, bro, you ain't looking so good in there. Looking like a roast chicken and all. So take a left, uh, back basically through the uh, to the bolt cutter doors. Then we're gonna head back up the stairs. Yes, we do have to judge this. I'm afraid. Straight into the next room. Now on PlayStation, I think the light was off, but it's on on the Xbox version. So. Whatever it is, make sure to turn the light on there to the right. Go straight ahead of us where the TV is. And interact with the top desk or the top drawer in order to get another note. Or so taking a look at another note, as it were. Right, so from here, we will head back down. And again, like I said, now we have to make the This is the first decision where we have to forgive or condemn. Now, remember, because we're going through the good playthrough, like I said, we're going to choose the green orb, which is forgive. Um, and again, we're going to do that for all four that are involved in, or supposedly involved, in the murder of Annika. So again, remember to choose the green orb for forgiving. Who pay for his crime? Shit. So again, if this is your good playthrough, make sure to choose the green orb here. If it's if you're going for the bad ending, make sure to condemn Mark. 
So make sure to condemn Mark if you're going for the bad ending. If you go for the, the good one, again, we chose green. So basically, for the bad ending, what you'll do is condemn Mark, save the sheriff, and uh, kill, there's going to be a man in the car, and then you're going to save everyone else. So that's, a lot of people have said that's all good for the bad ending. So, yeah. Anyway, what you're going to do then is continue to head back and forth, back and forth. And then eventually this door is going to open here on the left. Once you go in, nip in, and lovely stuff. A police station. Right, so here we are then at the police station. Uh, I don't know what else you want me to say. It's uh, it's all the same stuff. Try not to die and stuff. So going straight through and interacting with this first door here. Nipping through, we're going to take a right. And then a left. And then a left, since it's pretty much the only path that's going for a minute. So what you're going to be doing in this bit then is just continuing to run around. It's uh, basically an endless corridor. So for now, continue just heading around and sprinting to the left. NASCAR's there. Shit, shit. <laughs> then eventually we'll be able to take a right. There we go. And we can just be safe in the knowledge that we, uh, you know, still have clean pants. So straight through. Well, it's basically to the left there. We go straight through. We're going to find two dead cops on the floor. He's not looking good. Although he did look like he had a... A great way of dying. Looks like he was dancing or something before he uh, collapsed. Uh, but once you pick up the key, turn back around. And we're going to head back through into the sort of main room here. Take in a right. Just past the lockers. And outside. So what we need to do now is interact with the car and turn on the lights. It's a lovely looking pink car. Very sporty and beautiful. Uh, and in this area then, there's three valves. So the first one, we're going to choose the middle valve here. And if we look to the right, you're going to see another valve on its own. And we're going to pop that one on as well. The water's running again. So the water's running again. Thank you, Twilight Edward. All right, so uh, just in case you need a shower, that's what's happening. So go to the left, back to where the two dead cops are here. Going straight through this time. Again, remember, we're going to go in. We're going to interact with this uh, PC. And then what you need to do is basically turn the lights of the cell block off and the lights of the meeting room on. So basically red on the right and green on the left. Okay, I should be able to go into both rooms now. So if you think you're ready, if you're ready to go, let's go, bro. So back through, and this time we're going left. Sorry, we were going left. Back into the main room area. This time we are going to take another left. And we are going to very carefully turn on the light in this room. There we go. If it's, uh, yeah, it could, yeah, there it is. So it's basically going to turn on the police lights, as you can see, and we're all good. Having a speak of Annika, and we have to forgive or condemn someone else in just a bit. But we're going to interact with this third locker from the right. And interact with the key just in between the boots. So Broski scared for his life, or Mr. Sheriff. Which you should be, damn it. Anyway, heading through and take a left. Again, back into the main area. Take a left again. And then we're going to go right through this next door. Basically, again, following Annika with the dead cops are. Um, take a left. That's where Big Annie is. And we're going to take a right this time. We're going to go through the jail cell. And we're going to go into the brightest of the lightest of the whitest of pearly teeth. So, turn directly around. And then what you're going to see is this note in the middle drawer. There is the spotlight creature running around as well. So all spotlight boobs is running around, so be careful. But take a left out of the door here. And just interact with the note on the locker. So again, just be very careful because the spotlight creature is about. And, you know, nobody wants to... I mean, if she wants to catch me, snoo snoo and stuff, then yeah, why the hell not? But no. So again, just be careful at this point. So what we're going to do is go back the sort of way we came. There she is for me, just in the uh, distance. So we're going to take the next left. Go straight through. And then basically going straight through. You can see the light now. So turn around and there it is into the bright white light door. 
So back into the police station we are. So this time we're going to go out, take a right. No, in fact, we're going to be taking a right in a minute, sorry. So we're going to go left first, and then we're going to go to the right, um, back through where we're going to now save or condemn. So if you're going for, now obviously Nightmare, you're going to condemn everyone, so it doesn't matter. But obviously for the good playthrough, you're going to choose the green orb to save him. And even if you're going for the bad ending, again, save the sheriff here as well. So whatever you do at this point, uh, apart from the nightmare ending, if it's good or bad, make sure to save the sheriff. Fear for his son, but Annika's dead. Doesn't her mother deserve justice? You decide. Should Jack Matthews be forgiven? Or pay for his crime? I guess I must decide again. He can be forgiven for protecting his son. Any father would do the same. So there we go, that's another one done. So we will save him again for the good ending, obviously, and you can save him for the bad ending. Right, so take a left and take a left again. And from here, we're just going to go straight and go outside. Now, this is where we are going to help a man in a police car. I say a man, he's a criminal. He's a dirty scumbag. And bro thinks he's gangster or bro thinks he's got COVID. Either way, you suck, dude. <laughs> so what are you going to do then is just check the two cops on the floor and then talk to the crim crim again. No, they don't have the keys. But who are you? I'm no one. Just trying to get out of here. Do you know what's happening in Dormont? I don't know. The cops brought me from Needles. When we got here, everything went to shit. These freaks with machetes and knives came out of the dark and started killing everyone who wasn't standing in the light. <laughs> I'm not getting out of this car for sure. So can you help me out or not? Come on, get the car keys. If I find the keys, will you let me go with you? <laughs> no way, you're not getting in this car. But, uh, I can help you out. Oh. Get me the keys, and I'll use the headlights to clear a path for you. These cops seem to have been shot. Did you see what happened here? I don't know, I didn't see anything. And who cares anyway? They're dead, like the entire damn town. Come on. So, obviously in terms of the good ending, we're obviously going to help him out. But if you go for the bad ending, this time you're going to want to kill this guy. Uh, so what we need to do then is just head back in, head to the left, and you can see there's two items there in the lockers. One's a key and one is a lighter. Uh, so obviously with the key, we're going for the good ending, so we're going to pick up the key, we're going to give him the key so we can nip off. Again, if you want to go for the uh, for the bad ending, like I said, make sure to kill him this time around. That's if you're going for the bad ending. But again, we're going for the good ending in this particular playthrough, so I'm just giving, uh, telling you there, giving you the choice. So uh, that's where you would put the lighter there on the gas canister just le to the left of the police car. This time you give him the keys, he's going to flash open the light, and we are good to go, broski yoski. I want to get out of this place. And do you know what's even worse than having a pretty naff checkpoint system and a pretty naff save system? Is the fact that the achievement will only unlock when you get to the next area. So you can't even save, so you can't even like reload the chapter and get the other achievement. No, so uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm not really sure what Camel uh, 101 we're thinking there. It's a decent game, very decent game, very creepy, but uh, yes, frustrating on a lot of levels, unfortunately. So, heading into the post office, into the back here, and we are going to nip straight through, take a left, and pop your way down. We're gonna go straight into the room in front of us. There is, yes, in front of us, that's where we're going, hello. Right, so just on this desk here is yet another key. My God, they're laxy daisy with keys, aren't they? Disgusting. So head out the door, take a right. Now you're gonna to wanna to go to the door at the very end, 
And here we go, we're gonna pick up a fuse, so open up the key, we're gonna flick, uh, not pick up a fuse, we're gonna flick the switch. And, uh, yeah. The fire alarm's gonna be going completely nuts in just a minute. So we go back to the room, we found the key, so the third door here on our left. Interact with the old breaky breaky glass glass, and that's gonna come in mega handy. That's incredible strength, or the glass was extremely weak there. Uh, not sure which, but, you know. That's how it is. That's how it is. So we're going to take a right and we're going to go into the next room here on the right. And if we go to the right, we're going to find some lockers to nip ourselves in. Lovely. So back into another alternate reality. So we can actually just head out and to the left there. It looks like it's dark and this thing is going to kill you, but it is not. So don't not worry. Take a right into this uh, big area and right again at the end of the hallway. There we go. Don't worry, there's nothing that's going to try and kill us here, but we're in this, like, meeting office room, so we interact there with the note. I'm going to head back out. Well, after all this cutscene spooky stuff's going on. Oh, so now we're really getting into the nitty-gritty story stuff. So... Into this weird old room, we're going to walk straight ahead. We're going to find a table with a radio on it. And unfortunately, it's not playing anything decent. So we'll interact with it. And then we'll head down a little bit. And you're going to see the next radio on our left. Uh, we just need to wait a few seconds in order for the moving platform to, well, move. Once that's clickety-clacked, take a left. Head down, and there's going to be another radio to clickety-clack. What is this place? Now, this is a place where, uh, you know, if you've done, if you've drunk a little bit too much or done some weird stuff, it's not a place we want to go to. So anyway, 13, it's basically the door number what we're after, so we're just going to effectively head behind us there and go through door number 13. Uh, go to the end of the wall and turn around and go back. And turn around. And, oh, that looks longer. So this is basically one of those weird sequence sections. So all you're going to keep doing for now is we're just going to keep heading, well, around. And through the next doors. So when we get around the next corner, he's going to say something like, I'm walking in circles here, damn it! So open the door, but go, uh, turn around and go back through the door. And then we just need to go through another couple of uh, number 13 marked doors. And that'll finish this weird sequence. Is this the post office? I mean, it doesn't look very post office -y, does it? But anyway, what we're going to do, we just need to remove these planks of wood. So uh, Johnny from Ed, Ed, and Eddie can make a couple of friends there for his little plank friend. And if you ever watched Ed, Ed, and Eddie, you'll know what I'm talking about. King Beast of cartoonery. So uh, from here, then, we're going to take a right and head down. And then we'll take another right. And if we go left, we can then go into the toilets. Luckily, there's nobody uh, dumping in there, but there is a bright light going in, so off you nip. So a little bit of a cutscene we can't skip for the momentos. Okay. Okay, prep the room, give me six units. Abdominal wound, left upper quadrant, lateral wound, deep cut. It's lost a significant amount of blood. Breath sounds bilaterally, heart sounds one and two, a bit muffed. He has an IO in the right tibia, BP 70, systolic pulse 136. Okay, Where are they? Calm down, sir. You're gonna be all right. Are they safe? What pain? Transamic? Just a gram of tranexamic. Okay, we're good. Wait. I need to know they're safe. Sir, you need to calm down. Use the ambu bags. Help him with his breath. An ultrasound him, please. Andrea! Rosie! Do it. Oh man, it's not looking good. Right, so the mother, old mama, is going to chase us. The old, uh, kind of looks like a crackhead mother. Uh, so what we need to do then, we need to take the next left here and go straight. So continue going straight and take the next left in through this door. There's the mother. So go through this door here. Just continue on straight. Take the next left, left again, 
right all the way to the end, and then we're going to drop down this hole, you know, just because... If the, the, actually, I mean, there's nothing worse than a crackhead trying to take a bite out of you, but when it's a crackhead mother, that's even worse. It's like the final boss of sorts. So anyway, into this weird room then. Uh, we're going to be coming up to make another decision now. So you interact with the note there in the first draw. Interna interact with these three notes on the table. Post office chief. And once we've done that, then we can turn around and we can see our weird broski friend uh, next to the door. So, again, this is another decision we have to make. Obviously, good ending, as I said, we're always going to be choosing to save these people. Even if this is the bad ending uh, that you're going for, make sure again to choose the um, forgiveness section. So, like I said, for whatever particular reason, and on the bad ending, a lot of people have said that they've saved everyone apart from Mark at the very beginning and the guy in the police car. So, they killed those two off and saved the rest. So, again, good ending, obviously. We're going for the green. Forgiveness. Bad ending. We're also going for saving him. But, of course, if you're doing the nightmare ending, you know to condemn them all anyway. Nephew, should Ben Harris be forgiven? Will pay for his crime. Here we go again. <laughs> you just diverted some mail. No one deserves to go to hell for that. <laughs> Bruh, the hell? Right, so we're going to take a little left, take a little left, and we're outside, this section of the game is almost complete. Now, this ain't going to go well for these three bros by her. She could have literally just let them in there, but uh, you know, anyway. So turn around, go straight through the door to finish this section. Those guys, you ain't do it, although they could have literally just run back and stood by the fire. I don't know. AI is stupid. Anyway, welcome to the house. The next house? Or is this the first house? No, this is the first house. So turn around and we're going to head upstairs. Remember to turn the switch on because you ain't going to be wanting to be uh, beaten by the machete wielding crackheads. Uh, take a right. And then what we're going to do now is take a left and have a look at the attic. What, is up there? what do you think's up there, my friend? Oh, mate, just get a chair or something. So now we have to go through this entire weird section. Uh, but anyway... Interact with this next room here with the note on the door. Just keep interacting with it. The mother is coming, but all we've got to do is keep interacting with it and head to the back of the room. Finally, when she's gone, we're good to go. You know, I never get that with monsters and stuff. Um, do you mean, if you wanted to kill someone, you just sort of come out of the darkness and do it straight away as we head down. It's okay, you can just crack on. It's kind of like a police when they're responding to a robbery or someone's house. They come blasting with sirens on. Why not turn the sirens off and then, well, <laughs> they won't know you come in and it'll be easier to arrest them. So, go through this door here on the right, which is just past the TV clock. Now... Welcome to... Uh, it wasn't so bad an area, but it still can be potentially annoying. And again, <laughs> annoyingly, it's one of those that if you end up getting caught by this big monster, you'll have to replay from the beginning. And again, which is just not a pain. We really love that, you guys. I swear down. Yeah. So, anyway... Uh, the point is here, as we go down to the right, so this is where the, where the save section is. We basically need to find these six lion statues and put them on uh, little um, candles. But there is a big, giant, tree-like monster hanging around. So, as we get to the end here, there is the first lion. So, always be on your guard and always keep having a look out for the monster. So, obviously, again, it's a case of, 
You can sprint and run away from him if he does catch you. He will stop catching you eventually. Um, quite quickly. But remember that he... Uh, He'll only see you if he, uh, you are directly in front of him. So, we were just through the first lion then. Again, just keep checking around, make sure he's not about. Uh, the next lion is here. Should It should actually be on the big statue here, but it actually fell down. So again, what we'll do is we'll go and take that. Again, always just having a look around. So we'll uh, go straight and then we'll pop this one down where we uh, pop the first lion statue down. And obviously you can't sprint with these as well, and it's kind of tricky to see, so uh, just always be on the lookout. And as we head down the next right-hand path there, just making sure, then we can grab the next lion, and we will pop these three onto the first. There's basically a little pressure plate with three candles. We're going to put these three lion statues on it, but again, always be on your look in guard. So, it seems to be all good. Now, the first time he actually caught me, he was actually roaming around in the middle where we need to go. So, that's why I'm extra paranoid at this point. Um, <laughs> and the lights don't really help. So, because you can't really see him from very far away either. So, that's an also a bit of a pain in the old button bags as well. But you can see just in front of us there then, you can see the uh, couple of pressure plates with the candles on. So, just go ahead, grab these three lions and put them on the first three candles here. So what you'll see once you've done that is a flame going through to the middle, so that's fine. So we continue on our way. Right. So again, just having a little look around, but from where we were with the candles, take a direct left now. And again, he could be roaming anywhere, so again, always be on your lookout constantly. Uh, so we just continue down and we will... In fact, here's the first lion statue, which we're going to grab. So again, we're just going to go straight ahead and we're just going to drop that one down. Uh, where we put the sort of first three lions. Then we're going to turn around, head back. So just where we got the last lion, we'll take a right. And right at the end of this section is going to be the uh, next lion we're going to grab. So all the lions will be here all the time. Literally, the only random thing about it is big giant tree monster. Um, yeah, so there we go. So we're going to pop this lion straight down now. So we're all good. We just need to put these two on the two candles. And there's one more to grab. In fact, what we're going to do is actually put this one on the number one candle. First of all, because the next lion statuette is literally straight in front of us, more or less. So we'll do that one. So go ahead, quickly grab the next lion statue, which we uh, chucked down a little bit earlier on. Uh, again, just having a little look. The paranoia levels. Uh, nose, nose bounds. So here we go. We're going to stick this one on the number two. <laughs> Stick it in the number two. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I suck. Let's put this one down and then take an immediate left to find the last lion statuette. It should be directly in front of us. So there it is. 
Again, just creeping around every corner like a, like an absolute creeper, like a lurker, like a s no, I won't say that one. Um, again, and do you know what? The music doesn't help. Every time it sort of got a bit more intense, I thought he was chasing after me, but no. So anyway, once all three are done, what we need to do now is immediately go down and take a left. So back to where we got the uh, two line statuettes. Take a right down here, and there is a new path. So take this path with the fire breathing off it like Am's dragon. And we will get the thing that we can use for the attic. Why we had to go through all this um, just to get... Uh, we could just go straight through the door, by the way. But why we had to go through all of this, all of this paranoia, when we could have just grabbed the chair? Or, you know, we could have jumped. Who knows? Anyway. So we've got what we needed now, so... We are going to go back up the stairs. Yeah, and make sure not to run into any dark rooms, because you know how that'll go. Stabby, stabby. And here we go, then. We can finally take a left, go through this door, and then we can finally make our way up into the attic. Right, so as you can see, there is Am's angry thing right there. So what you need to do is actually grab one of these boxes and just throw them behind Shadow Bro. And make sure to try and hit some of the boxes. Exactly not like that. Um, but try and aim for the top if you can. And you have know when you've done it because he's disappeared. Don't obviously go to the left because there's more shadow creatures. But we go to the right here. Interact with this and pop on the switch. So that's turned on the outside lights again. Why we, we could have just done this a hell of a lot quicker without going through random tree monster stuff, but there we go. So we can climb back down the ladder now. And once we've turned around then, we're going to take a right. Nip straight through, take the next left into this door. Again, remember to turn on the lights because there's some eyes watching you. Sometimes that would be considered, well, these days it would be considered, uh, you know, Hot, as long as they've got a video camera on them. But it's still pretty creepy. So make sure to turn on the next light as well. I'll turn on the outside lights. Oh, people watching me in the dark. How fantastic. So take the next, well, obviously in through this door. Don't worry, I don't think there's any monsters in here. So we can just go ahead and pick up the key. The key of life. And there we go. So now we can just take the next left as we get back into the house. We're going to run back downstairs. Uh, get, well, we ain't going that way, are we? But just past the TV, the first door here on the right. And again, make sure to turn on the uh, lights, because we's going to the basement dog. And everyone loves the basement dog. Pick up this bowl at the end of the room. Give that a throw, whatever you want. Just want to flex my throwing abilities there in-game. Interact with the note. And obviously, there's going to be some more information about what happened. And uh, no! Right, so back up the stairs we go, straight through into the brightness of the whiteness of the lightness. Okay, so we're going to get a bit of uh, reality shift in alternating, so you just need to run straight ahead for the time being. And you should have made it past the monsters with no problem, so just continue running straight, and then we are going to stop just by this fire in just a moment. There we go, so run past the fire, sorry, no next to the police car, just stand here for the minute and then we're gonna uh, go up to this wall, but wait, do not run forward because what we need to do is now go to the left next to this bin or garbage can and next we will be able to run straight down quick as you can, run straight down oh, but stay, if that, if that does happen, just stay, wait here for the minute and then continue running once you turn right, stand right here and then go to the sort of second fence panel. And then you can uh, make a break to the right. And then take the next left past the oil drums here. And you should have made it just past the creatures. So again, it did take me a, a few attempts to do. So uh, don't worry if it takes you to. Um, but basically, it's going to be a big green monster, giant monster that will go past if it hasn't already. And then we can go left straight into the Dormante Feu de Marquite. Is if it was French. But don't worry, there's nothing here to kill us, which is nice. I'll take things not trying to kill us every day of the week. Right, so heading to the left-hand side door first. There's a sort of uh, 
back left. Make sure to turn on the light. Here we go. Go away. Skip. Oh, do not sing, Steve and Maggie. That is the worst. Next to the door on the left here, we're going to see this lion statue. We're going to interact with this just the once. And uh, I, by once, I meant twice. Um, <laughs> so that we can actually go through the bright light into the uh, next alternate of realities. So, again, don't worry, there are no monsters. Um, so don't worry a ting about a ting. But what we're going to do is go back into the room where we just turned the light on. The one with the forklift. So interact with the forklift here. And it's going to be a little cranky crandle. Let me call her a crandle. Why didn't anybody tell me? I'll be making an ass out of myself. So anyway, pick up the Mrs. Crabapple cranky crandle. And head back through to the left hand side door. So we can get back into our real reality. Ah, it's bright. So bright. So head back into the room here on the right and then what you need to do now is uh, just get rid of all these boxes off the table first. Yes, you need to get rid of them all. And I failed miserably at doing that. So, yeah. So once you finally done the hard work then, uh, we will now interact with this Crandall, this uh, Mrs. Crabapple Crandall just once. And then we will, excuse me, excuse me sir, I, I, God damn it, I just made things worse myself. Ah, oh, I closed the door now as well, yeah, just, it's fine, it's fine. So go ahead, take a right and we're going to go to the next lion, we're going to interact with this Crank Crandall three times. Right, so we're just going to basically have this uh, bit. We're basically now going to be chased by the mother in just a minute. But for now, just continue going through all the doors. Is this endless? Right, so we're going to have little broski by the bed. I say little broski, it's big, scary broski. Broski's hung himself up there. Right, that's not so good. But basically, when we interact with this room, Mother will appear right there. And a, um, a a new path will open eventually. There we go. So now she's actually going to chase us. So it's just a case of running straight through all of the things as quick as you can. Once you've knobbed off this last chair, go to the second door on your left and run straight through. I'm pretty sure I almost got caught there. So, uh, well, poopy pants time is over for a little bit, thankfully. So this part then is it's about five minutes long. So all you're basically doing is just following the road, having a bit of conversations with Annika. And then you're going to follow the road and have conversations with Mr. Robot Mask Man. The old, uh, what's a crapper version of iron? Um, Ron Metal. Yes. No. Why am I here? What was your name? Who? Your daughter. Rosie. Her name was Rosie. Rosie. Beautiful name. Why did I take this road? have to be raining that day. Rosie, it was all my fault. Again? I don't need to be reminded of this room. Actually, I'll tell you what's worse than iron. Iron deficiency. So instead of Iron Man, this guy is more Iron Deficiency Man. So we're going to have a little conversation. So again, just follow the uh, path ahead. Keep speaking to Iron Deficiency Man until... 
we see where and why the spotlight creature came about. We're destroyed because I took a shortcut. I'll start it that night. The other driver had a family too. It should have been me. I should have been the one to die. Not Rosie. Her name is Carol. She's going home from work. So I'm not sure if Carol chases you here, but uh, it's worth not risking it. So just go straight ahead and we're effectively just going to nip through the door here on the left. Carol from the accident. Now, of course, what happened to Carol is absolutely terrible, but um, I mean, Carol had some good milkies, milky makers, did she not? Or if that's just the monster, yeah, whatever. Anyway, here we are now at the fire station. Uh, as it turns out, yes it is! I just told everyone. So, nipping straight through, ignoring the, again, noise where the World War II noise, it's scary. Right, so, there's monsters here, what you need to do is wait for the orange light to come on, and when it does, just sprint straight through to the next door. So, now, give it a straight, straight sprint, straight through the door, job done. Go to the right, and you're gonna see Iron Deficiency Man there. Again, we need to find someone, apparently. Fine, let's just do all the jobs that you want me to do. Okay, so let's do that then. So, heading straight up, up to the stairs. And again, we are going to need to go in some rooms, um, etc, etc, as, as we've done so far. So, straight into the uh, right-hand side room. Again, on PlayStation, I think this light is off. So, just make sure to turn it on if it is off. And I think maybe in the 7th or 8th from the right uh, locker, we need to find a key here. So, it's there. There it is, man. Hello! So, somebody's a bit uh, laxy-daisy with that, leaving a key just for me to find. So, take the next left and go down the steps. There's going to be a little puzzle here where we have to wait, so just wait at the bottom of the stairs first. Oh, in fact, no, we're not quite there yet. Take a right, sorry, into the, <laughs> through this next door. Uh, turn the light on, of course. And then we're going to need to remove these boxes in order to get through the door. Why is there a door here? Sorry, so this is where the puzzle is. So we're going to wait at the bottom of these stairs right here, as you can see. So we need to wait until it shifts into the reality, real reality. And then just go ahead straight to the door and stay here for a minute. And then when it goes back on, just make a sprint straight for the next set of doors on your left. And you should have made that quite easy. So into the fuse box we go, or into the locker we go, sorry, to pick up the valve. Whoa, 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 whoa. And again, you just have to, in fact, no, if you're quick enough, you can actually just nip it straight up, back up the stairs. There we go. I don't know what happened there. Uh, but up we go, and that's job done. So we are now going to pop this valve here, and then we're going to turn each valve once. And if we turn the corner, the fires will start to burn out. The fire is burning out, yeah. A couple of cockroaches there for your viewing pleasure. Um, so, first things first, we're going to go into this right-hand side door room. And nothing's here, just relax on yourself. We're going to interact with this note, though, on the desk. And, um, yeah, that's all we're going to do. So, interact with the note on the desk. All I can do is wait for them. <laughs> well, I'm Keith, you suck, bruh. Uh, right, so we'll just take a right and go through the door. Now, this is a nice little puzzle area. So, um, every time you step on a symbol, uh, symbol one of the other um, things go up. So, what you need to do then is pop, grab a barrel, pop it straight in the middle. If you can, immediately run to the right and see if you can sort of shake it off. Um, if not, grab the next barrel here, get onto the next platform there. And just simply give it a throw as much as you can, and then hopefully that should be enough then so they'll both go off and you could just jump straight up to the top. That gets annoying sometimes, so just quickly jump off. There we go. So, three barrels here. 
So we're going to pick up the first one and we're going to drop it on this symbol. Then we're going to turn around, we're going to grab the next symbol. Now watch out, there is a little gap there in between the third barrel, just there. So don't fall down that. Go across the plank and uh, put this on the next symbol and then turn around, go ahead and grab the third barrel and put that on the next, next symbol. So now you may think, what next? Well, I'll tell you, that's what I'm here for, right? Pick up the second barrel. Now again, make sure not to go straight through to the next symbol. There is a gap and you will die, so go to the left slightly and then go onto the next symbol to drop this barrel down. That will actually put another way uh, uh, for us. So carefully jump through. And then again, just, just carefully, you're effectively, we're just going forward now. So when you get on the next symbol, wait until the path is clear and then you're good to clear. Okay, so pick up this first barrel and we're going to put this one directly to the left of us onto this uh, <laughs> pressure plaid. Then the next one, put it in the top right hand corner. Doesn't matter the barrel, but as long as it's in the correct way, there we go, it is. Now we can press the switch in the middle, and that'll start going doo, boo, 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 fully charged. Go to the end, interact with the lever, and then we'll turn around and run back down. There you go, there's the next path though. So follow it, but again, be careful, very easy to fall off here. Once you step on the next symbol, just wait until the next path appears. And there we go, now we're onto the main ground, we're almost to the end of this section, so take a right, and then here we're going to take a right again, at the very end, just by the door. Now we need to put in three numbers, so for this first number here, we're going to put in number three. So turn around, so that'll be the first number there, three, so take a left, past, uh, no, in fact it is this left, so it's going to be three, and then six. There we go, so three for the first one, six for the second one. Take another left and it'll be four. So the last number is going to be four right here. So once you've inputted three, six, four, turn around, interact with the note. And once you've done that, if you look to the right, you can see the door and you can see Iron Deficiency Man sitting there waiting for you. It's another decision we have to make, which means, remember, Obviously, good ending, we're going to go good. Even for the bad ending, we're also going to choose to save um, uh, Keith. And obviously, if you're going for the nightmare ending, you're going to choose to condemn him. That's what the chief did his whole life. He was so dedicated to the fire department that he often forgot he had to be a father to his son. This time, he didn't forget. And so he colluded with the sheriff to drop the investigation and protect their son. Keith Bradley was a noble man, but he helped cover up the death of a little girl. What do you decide? Should Keith Bradley really be forgiven or pay for his crime? Hopefully, this is the last time. The chief can be forgiven for being a good man. I just made a mistake. So there we go. Because we've forgiven everyone for Annika's accident, we'll get that achievement. Obviously, when you go through your nightmare ending and you've chosen to condemn everyone, uh, you'll get that specific achievement for condemning all four of those. So for now, this is uh, effectively just a kind of easy linear path to take for the time being. So just follow along. And uh, yeah, we're going to speak to Annika. Iron Deficiency Man is not quite here, but we're going to basically have a look at Annika's accident and we're going to end up by the sawmill.
following me. Away from the gate! I need help. I'm being followed. Go away! Now! I'll shoot! Well, he's pleasant. Thanks for nothing. Hopefully I can get in around the back. Get out! Right, so let's get the sawmill. So this is a, effectively quite a short chapter. So first of all, interact with the pallet. Move that out of the way. Thankfully, it's not as heavy as the one from earlier on. Uh, interact with the generator. That will obviously get some lights going so we can just come here and grab the bolt cutters or the pliers. Or the player cutters or the bolt pliers. Whatever you want to call them, that's what we got them. So go ahead, go back, interact with the lock on the uh, fence here. And then we can finally nip in. Now, the spotlight creature will be wandering about in just a bit. So again, just uh, it's easy enough to avoid her though this time. But for now, go straight and then right slightly into this house. Um, obviously, take a uh, turn the light on. Otherwise, that means soiten doif. Ah, nice. Uh, straight in front of us then in this junk-filled fallout-looking room. Um, just next to this towel here is the office key, which we're going to need. So, um... Spinning around. So from here, take a right. You can see the tractor in front of us. We're going to take a left. And then straight in front of us is the office. What we need, the office key. So again, turn on the lights. You don't want to be getting smashed out there. And yes, there is the spotlight creature. Coming towards us. Run! Yeah, finally. So in this room, just on the right is a... Just behind this box is what... It's a replacement lab. It totally looked like something else. In all fairness, but no, it's all good. So, from here then, what we can do again, just be careful where the spotlight creature is. But we are now heading basically for the barn on the right-hand side. So, it kind of does this... It only does one sort of weird path. So, as you can see there, it's directly uh, just there by the barn. So, you can actually hide in the barn. <laughs> just, just about got away with that one there. Um, you can sort of chill out just behind the tractor for a minute and he'll start... Or she will, sorry, start nipping off to the right. Go and get, Carol. Get away. Go and get. There you go. Once she starts looking that way, you can now take a right past these logs. And again, we will just take our time here because she does have a little look back. There we go. But you should be okay now to just take the next right. So immediate right as soon as she stops looking. Get out. So go ahead, interact with the... Um, oh, that guy's where one eye. Uh, so go ahead, interact with the tractor. It should now turn on because we got the replacement lamp. Go straight in front of us. And you're going to have a conversation with the guy who threatened to shoot us. Nice. Hey, you! Help me out of here! Who are you? Get down. There's plenty of light around. I'm Jeff. I'm in charge here. I can't go down while that monster is down there. Well, what do you want me to do? I need to turn the spotlight and point it at the path. I'm not getting down. Don't touch that light. Then get down here. It's safe. No, don't do that. You can't leave me in the dark. He refused to help anyone who came here. Shot at them to scare them away. So once again, this is another kill or save section. Obviously, again, either for the good and for the bad ending, we are going to choose to save Jeff. Um, if you do want to get the achievement for killing him, um, all you've got to do is just switch off the um, switch directly in front of you and that'll kill him dead. But for now, like I said, for good and bad ending, take a right, uh, throw this barrel at this fence a couple of times until it falls down. Once 
once it's finally down, uh, we're going to take a little left, interact with this switch here, and this is what will get us the achievement for saving Jeff Rowe. It will also open up the path for us, so it's, yeah, effectively job done. So go ahead, take a right, go straight in front of us now. Um, again, like I said, extremely annoyingly, the achievement for saving him won't unlock until we get to the next chapter, which isn't too far away. Uh, but yeah, genuine pain for that. So thank you very much, Mrs. and Mr. Camel 101s. I won't be able to help you anymore. Good luck, Edward. So this is where it started. So, we are now on to the final decision of saving or killing. Now, this is where I actually tried to make the backup save um, and tried to go back into it, but when I tried to reload it, it put me back in the final house, so it didn't work, which is annoying. But, like I said, this is the... Remember the three people who died from the post office earlier because she drove away? This was her. So, again, like I said, for good ending, of course, we, uh, we save. For bad ending, again... We are going to save her. Remember, we've only killed two people for the bad ending. And obviously, for nightmare ending, you're obviously going to choose to kill her. But again, this is considered the good playthrough, as we've all been aware. So again, we're going to save her just by simply clicking on the door twice. If you did want to kill her, just run straight towards the church, and that kills her dead. Uh, right, so that is, like I said, that's the final choice we need to make. And then we can head straight into the church. A couple of puzzles, and then a bit of a chase. As always. Now, what... I mean, what would be better is if we could just get to chapter select and points in the game where we could make different decisions. It's... Again, it's just genuinely... For me, anyway, I don't know if, if, if people will enjoy playing through games three times. I'm not a fan of going through games a whole bunch of times. It, it's just not for me. I like to play the game once, even maybe twice is fine, but... Three times is just, yeah. So anyway, we're going to head into the left room anyway. All my grumbles will just um, forget about that. Take the next room here into the right. There are no enemies in here, so you don't have to worry. But we are going to interact with this first candle at the back wall. Take a left and then interact with this next candle. And then if we turn around to the left again, we're going to uh, interact with that candle. And the last one is straight in front of us. So that's the sort of first easy-ish puzzle done. As long as you hear the bells, ding dong, come and get it, come and get it. And into the next room we go. So this time we're going to take the next left and we need to click things in order. So the first thing we're going to click is the bow here on the left. Straight in front of us is the fishing road. Turn directly around and at the other end is the spade. And then to the left is going to be the rake. So once you've uh, collected those four, the bells will ding dong, ding dong. Take the next left into this next room. We need to take a few pictures or click on a few pictures. So this first one here is the top right one, which is all the trees. Uh, the next one is the woman playing the violin with a whatever the hell that was. And the last one is the old naky man there looking like he's being whipped. Again, back then it was torture. Now being whipped like that is pleasure, apparently. Is uh, <laughs> isn't it, though? So mother is coming. Oh, wait, is there a way to go? You bet your sweet butt bags there are. What we need to do is actually run straight behind the... I brought this crack here, mother needs to calm down. But we just need to effectively run behind the altar. Come on. So take a straight right. The secret door will begin opening, thankfully. So nip your buns straight down here. And take a left and continue running all the way down. Now I'm not sure if she is still chasing us at this point. Um, but when we take a left... Uh, we have to do this puzzle. It's going to keep basically alternating between realities. So what we need to do is grab a box. Every time we shift realities, it will drop. So, yep. So the first platform we need to put it on is the one at the very top there. So obviously you've got five. We need to put it at the very top next to the statue. So that's the first one. Take a right and you can see the next box we can pick up. This one's going to go on the left-hand side. If you're looking towards the statue, I mean. And go ahead, grab another box... One off the floor there, 
And this is going to go on the right hand side. Yeah, well, I'll just try that again. There we go. So once that one is done, it will now actually, we'll get rid of this top box and it'll um, open up a switch we can push in. That's going to open up another secret passage. Again, I'm unsure if uh, the Kraken Mother is actually chasing us. But what we need to do is go all the way to the end here. Turn it around. And then we're going to take... Uh, just turn back around again, sorry. And this new path will open up for us. Interact with the note here, though, on the right-hand side. Let your faith be bigger than your penis. Oh. Uh, uh, or was that the other way around? Anyway, once you turn around and turn back, the new path will open up. We're going to stay right here for a minute because the reality shifts. So what we need to do is now run to the second set of candles. So, oh, not quite yet. Apparently, I decided to paranoia out at the last minute. So, run past this first candle and this second set of archway candles, whatever you want to do. And then we're just going to simply run ahead to the third one. So, stop right here at the next one. And now you should have enough time to just sprint it straight down to the very end. We are going to see the spider crawling as well, so don't want to get caught on that, do you? But anyway, straight through to the other end and immediately open up the door. And it's job done. So this is the final area, more or less, of the game. So turn around, uh, go to the house, and interact with this. Well, you can't interact with the light switch because it doesn't work properly. Now, like I said, with me trying to do the backup save and trying to reload it, it actually put me straight back in this house in the final area with no way back. So good job there. Pick up the key from the cupboard and take a right and a right again. And then if we turn back around... We should, in fact, I don't even think you needed to do that. We could have just gone straight left. Sorry, that was me being silly. Now, once we, we will turn the light on here, but once we get to this point, again, turn around. And again, turn around, we get to the wall. The mother will start chasing us now. She's going to come around the corner saying, my house. My house. Ah! So just run straight back through the door, take a right, and we can stay here just by the phone. And eventually she will just disappear. But that genuinely uh, made me crap them the first time and second time I played that. So now we should be good for the moment. So go straight ahead and we're going to effectively have to find some visions. It was all I had. I came to Dorman looking for peace. I thought we could start over in a small town. But now she's gone. And I'm all alone. If only I could speak to her one last time. Something tells me that was Erin, mate. Right, so now we're obviously going to follow the light. We're going to head back upstairs. And yeah, so that's all this section is for the next 10 minutes or so is as we go right ahead, we're just finding these visions. Finding out what happened and stuff. She said we had a special talent. That we could talk to ghosts. It was supposedly a power that ran in all the women in the family. I wonder if her books are still around. I do remember packing them with all the other stuff. Darshi blows, right? So once that one's done, turn around, go back out, and head back down the steps. And when we get here, we are going to continue. Uh, make sure to switch the light on here, though, because we're going to go down and into the basement. You don't want to die just yet. Uh, so go to the left. There's another scene. This one contains dozens of incantations and and other weird things. One of these spells creates a channel that enables a person to talk with the deceased person. I could talk to my baby again. Okay, so uh, it's going to be a little mother scene again, ch chase scene this time, so just continue running forward and 
what you're going to do is just keep trying to open every door. So keep trying to open every door on the left, and then eventually the mother, the crackhead mother, will appear right in front of us. So just be careful. There she is. So once you do that, run towards the flickering light and then open each door. So that's what you actually need to do. So this flickering light here, just keep trying every door and one of them will open. I believe it's this next one here, which it's not. It's the one on the end. There we go. So once you've done that, run straight through and then we go, oh my god. So back up the stairs we go. This time take a right and up some more steps. And then take a right again and right again. And then we're going to go into this room with some spooky bros. So turn on the light and interact with the cutscene. I'll try the ritual. It's fairly simple to do, but I was unable to find one of the ingredients. I'm going to try it either way. I have nothing to lose. Yeah, this kind of reminds me of that South Park episode where Butters fakes his own death with a pig and uh, Butters' parents tries to bring him back from the dead. Ah, oh, no, I wouldn't do that, Stark. Ah, oh, no. If you know South Park, you'll know what I'm talking about. But anyway, this one is done, eventually. There we go. Tidy boys. With a big, big Collins right there. So, uh, go straight ahead, more or less. Um, and we're going to go straight into this room here. In to the right hand side go through into the what looks like the parents bedroom I talked with someone on the other side I thought it was Annika at first but it, it wasn't I tried to break the connection but I couldn't there are voices in my head now I, I don't feel so good What do you know? Messing with the dead has incredible consequences. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? So, uh, yes, it wasn't Crackhead Mother. It was just Arbeezy or Arbizu or whatever she said. Die or something. Uh, right, so once that door closes, we'll turn straight back around. Go straight through to the next door here. And hello, hello. Alternate reality again. So, take a left. Go straight down the stairs. And we are going to go through into the living room area, basically going into the sort of kitchen area where we started the chapter. Eventually, get out of my way! Go on, get! And then once we're here, we'll take another right. Now, what we're looking for, if we get into this next room finally, is the next door to go through. So, boom. I'm back. We're back, baby. Right, so here we are then, where we started the game, or started the chapter, sorry. So we're going to go back into the next room. Take a left for another vision. He talks to me in my sleep. He whispers in my ears when I'm awake. His name is Zack. He, he promises revenge. He shows me images of death and decay. I don't want to hurt anyone. I just wanted to talk with Annika one last time. What have I done? Oh, come on, man, die, demon. Not doing very good by are we? Right, so back up the stairs we go. And this is going to be the final vision until we're finally able to go up into the attic and see what was going on all along. Everyone, everyone involved in Annika's accident. I'm starting to actually want to do it. I feel my sanity fading away. I can't take this anymore. I'm going to end this the only way I can. I mean, to be fair, if uh, somebody was involved in uh, my child's murder, then I would want blood. So die demon can possess me anytime. Right, so anyway, uh, not anytime, just, you know, p please don't get inside me, Mr. Demon. I'm not that kind of gal. Right, so pop the medallion in. Now we have to basically um, have to do a thing. So the top one there looks like a fish. The second one, we're going to interact with it twice. And then the third one, we're going to interact with it uh, three times. And that will open up the way for us. Sorry, give me two seconds. Just trying to plead with Die Demon not to enter me at any point in my life. Because I don't want it. So when we get up the stairs, shock and horror. Da, 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 there she is all the time. 
uh, Erin just decided to hang herself instead. Uh, nice. Right, so. Well, it's unfortunate, but it's true. Right, so now we're going to interact with these books. You need to interact with both of them in order to get to the uh, alternate reality. Someone dangerous. They're probably trying to trying to contact Rolf Harris and Jeffrey Epstein and all the um, incredible nonces who deserve the most severe punishment in the planet. Uh, those are the dangerous. Right. So anyway, uh, locked door. We're not going through that. So we're going to interact with this cupboard here to pick up some salt. Because why not? Fancy some uh, fancy some chips or fries or what? Britain and American, we're all just weird, aren't we? Calling stuff different stuff. But we've got a couple of tables. So interact with this next door. Tis not going to happen. Go back down. Interact with the next door. Tis not going to happen. Turn around again and interact with the next door. Tis going to happen. Why didn't you just open the first time? Damn it. Anyway, all the way through to the next door. Hello. So into the next door. Looks a bit nice here. Whoa, no, it's not. So interact with the note on the chair. And to the close, so the closer to the beginning. Turn back around. Uh, try not to get grabbed by any of the wandering hands. The old Jeffrey Epstein, Gary Glitter hands. Uh, interact with the radio here on the left. That'll get everything going down. And straight through we go. Right, there's a couple of candles uh, on the floor. Now we have to put, uh, we have to do these, turn them on in a specific order. So if we look at it sort of this way here and look at the very top ones, or apparently the sort of top left-hand side ones, we're going to interact with that one first at the top right. The next set, we're going to interact with the uh, sort of left one. The can three candles on the right interact with uh, all three, but the left, middle, and then right one. And then the ones just below us, we are going to interact with the uh, left one. And then the one, the candles to the left of that interact with the middle one and then the right one. I hope that made sense. If you've done it correctly, though, you've got the mirror, which is, of course, what we need. Got to see if you still look good, even though you've been chased to death by deathy things and a monster with a, a, a fantastic cleavage, must be said. Uh, takes care of herself. Right, now we're into the hospital. This is the last final area of the game. We need to head to the right. The sp uh, Carol, the spotlight monster, will appear here. So once she does that... Hey, Milky Mamas, what's going on? Got a better body than me, which is disgusting. Uh, right, so we're just going to stay around by this corner. Now, what should happen is, Carol, you'll, you'll be able to just see her, like, veering off to the left where she's looking at the glass in front of us. Sometimes, though, she may come towards us. It can be random, but hopefully she will s start looking to the left once she does. There you go, just check the light. Once she starts looking to the left, you should then be okay to just nip it straight past and give it the sprint of life. And when we get to the end of the corridor, take a right. And then, basically, she is coming again, but very slowly. Oh, more abs than me. All I got is flabs. So interact with this door here again. Make sure to turn the light on so you don't get mauled. And interact with the photo frame there. And that will be the end of Carol. <laughs> snoo, snoo. I see that now. It wasn't my fault. So this is finally the end of your, unfortunately, first playthrough then. So just interact with the candle and then the mirror and then the uh, the photo frame and then the mirror. And obviously we will get the good ending first. Once we interact with the books, we'll get the good ending. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. So I don't know what you thought of your first playthrough. Uh, yeah, I think the game it wasn't bad. It definitely had its creepy moments. It was ge genuinely an all-around decent game. But the fact, like I said, the fact of the checkpoint system, the save system being, let's face it, absolute rubbish. Really didn't enjoy that at all. If you end up dying, you end up like four minutes uh, prior. 
and the fact you have to do three playthroughs and there's no chapter select or you can't it's just yeah so i mean it's been out since 2020 so i can't see camel 101 um fixing it so it's just the way it is but there we go so all you're going to do when you get back again it's going to be the good ending achievement getting towards us and then that'll be that so thank you so so much for watching guys and gals Hope you enjoyed the game. I hope the guy did help as well. If it did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. Big shout out to all my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Real big thank you. Thank you so much. And for everyone who inter interact, uh, interact with me on the daily as well. So thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one, guys and gals. <gasps> but, but, but big love. And actually, just before we get off here, this is what it's going to look like. So like I said, you play through two or three. Nightmare ending and all corresponding achievements you will get for con killing slash condemning everyone you come across. And then, as I've said throughout the playthrough for the bad ending, condemning the first one mark, saving the sheriff, kill the criminal in the car and save the rest. And you should be golden as nuggets. So good luck for the rest. Love ya!